Hi and welcome to this video log with me Wayne from SwimmingCyclingRunning.com Well in the past week a report has come out from Diabetics UK suggesting that diabetes in the UK has doubled over the last 20 years. The incidence of type 2 diabetes and type 1 diabetes have doubled. Now they don't break down how much type 2 and type 1 diabetes there are in that but it's always assumed that type 1 diabetes is about 10% of the total diabetes population. Type 1 diabetes is a deficiency in the insulin production of the pancreas. The pancreas isn't working properly and therefore people need to supplement their insulin generally by daily injections. And that particular condition is normally found when people are young. Type 2 diabetes is found when people have a resistance to insulin and an increasing resistance to insulin so that the insulin that they are producing isn't doing necessarily the job that needs to be done and therefore they produce more and more and more insulin that unfortunately just becomes less and less effective. Now at the same time as this report comes out I've just finished a book I'm going to just put it there called The Law of Nutrition, The Law of Nutrition by Professor Tim Noakes. And Professor Tim Noakes is well known in the triathlon and endurance sport world because he's a top sports scientist and sports nutritionist from South Africa who has a, an A1 rating in sports science research. And he also produced this book which I've read years ago and I have actually done a review of called The Law of Running. Now, I like Tim Noakes because as a coach, my initial mantra that I start out with is this. Don't do what other people do just because they do it. Dare to be different. Now, in the law of running, um, which goes completely into running in, in terms of long distance and ultra distance running, um, Professor Noakes, Tim Noakes, um, suggests that our largely held view that you have to drink X amount of water um, in X amount and Y amount of time um, should be disbanded and discarded because it's a potentially dangerous thing to do. Hyponatremia is a condition where you drink so much water that your organs start to shut down because of it and more people die of that drinking too much water than have ever died of dehydration in long races or even hot races. So he's bucking the trend, he's going against perceived wisdom. I like that. Not only that, the book is full of incredible things that you can take with your running. So I already like Tim Noakes for that reason. He bucks a trend. If the evidence doesn't show that something should be done, he says, hang on a minute, let's rethink and do something else because otherwise you could be doing yourself damage. Now getting back to the law of nutrition, Tim Noakes had a Damascene moment when he realised that the advice he had been giving out for all his life had actually been wrong. But worse than that, it could be potentially harmful to the general population. In the law of running, he initially suggested that we should be carb loading. This is how to do it. You should eat X amount of carbs per hour um, as you run a marathon or an ultra marathon and things like that. But he realised through looking at the evidence that he actually was wrong, completely wrong. And that instead of needing that, those carbohydrates and to ingest them, what we should have been doing in reality is avoiding carbohydrates. He himself, as he, as he went through later years, got a bit of a tummy. He, he found it difficult to control his weight. Now this is a man who's done 70 marathons and ultra marathons. And he knows sports nutrition like the back of his hand because he researches it. And he's an A1 grade scientist at research. And he's suddenly seen that this just isn't working. His own father died of type 2 diabetes related complications. And those can include, and did include in his father's case, having to have your legs amputated. Now it was Einstein who said, madness is doing the same thing time and time again and expecting different results. And Tim Noakes started looking at populations 
and the population of South Africa is getting more and more obese and the prevalence of type 2 diabetes mellitus is becoming an epidemic in its proportions. And that's all happened since the 1977 US dietary guidelines were introduced that promoted effectively the diet heart hypothesis that you needed to eat low fat and high carbs to reduce your cholesterol to actually reduce cardiovascular disease and things like that. And since then we have seen an absolute explosion in obesity and type 2 diabetes mellitus and other conditions related to type 2 diabetes or as he would put it insulin resistance. So Tim started to look at the evidence again and he was abhorred by what he found. He found that the evidence suggesting that the high carb low fat diet was good was actually pr pr primarily doctored to suit trials that were funded by either big pharma or big sugar companies or food companies who were promoting sugar because sugar had to replace fats to make their food more palatable. For example, the reduction in cardiovascular disease since 1977 was put down to the introduction of the 1977 US dietary guidelines. However, at the same time, the actual prevalence of smoking in the world has gone down dramatically. And if you look at the reduction in smoking, that reflects the reduction in cardiovascular disease. So the causation and association is totally wrong. There's no causation of high fats with cardiovascular disease. It's just an association because the graph looks similar. As we reduce our fats, cardiovascular disease was coming down, completely ignoring the fact that we actually were reducing smoking at the same time. And that reduction in smoking is far more likely to have been the cause of the reduction in cardiovascular disease. Now the law of nutrition goes into the science of nutrition 100% and it, it, he, it was brought about because someone tweeted Professor Noakes once it had this Damascene uh, transition from purporting you need to eat carbs to really don't eat carbs if you possibly can. Um, someone tweeted him about a weaning baby saying is it okay to wean to, to to be on a low carb high fat diet when I'm weaning a baby I'm just worried that sort of the, the baby will fart a lot that type of thing it wasn't quite that and he said yeah well there's no no evidence to show that um, that's not the case it, you, your your baby is effectively drinking breast milk that's got nothing to do with effectively what you eat it's high fat and it's good milk so that shouldn't be a problem but because he was promoting a low carb high fat diet the dietitians of South Africa were had their noses put out, out of joint quite rightly because if, if all you need to do to reduce obesity and type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease is actually adopt a low carb high fat diet then the dietitians effectively are out of work we're talking about people who are making their money out of something don't want their meal ticket taken away and that brings us to the second person I want to just mention in this vlog, and that is the guy here. This is a book called The Obrey Way by Graham Abri. And Graham Abri says in that book, he said he, when he was when people said to him, "You should be drinking these sports drinks; they're phenomenal for you. They've got carbohydrates, this and that." He ignored all that advice, and he ignored all that advice for one main reason. He said, "Whenever I see these products, I." come down to the big question who benefits if I buy one of these products who benefits and that's what Tim Noakes found out effectively the people benefiting from the studies that were supporting low fat high carb were the people promoting the studies who were big pharmaceuticals and the big food companies the big pharmaceuticals were trying to put statins as a natural course for people to lower their cholesterol because they were suggesting cholesterol is the cause of cardiovascular disease but as Tim Noak shows in The Law of Nutrition that actually is a misnomer. Cholesterol has very little to do with 
cardiovascular disease. Yes, cholesterol can build up in the arteries, but a heart attack is caused by an explosive um, event that stops blood getting to the heart. That's not caused by high cholesterol. In fact, high cholesterol, if you have high cholesterol, you're only 1.3 times more likely to have a heart attack. Whereas if you have type 2 diabetes, you're seven times more likely to have a heart attack. So he realised we're looking at this thing completely the wrong way. 1.3 times is statistically insignificant. Seven times is absolutely massive. Now, because he was uh, bucking the established view, there was bound to be a backlash, and a backlash came in a big way. The dietitians of South Africa persuaded the um, Healthcare Professional Council of South Africa to put uh, Tim Noakes on a charge of unprofessional conduct and potential dangerous harm to a, um, a client. That client being the person who had tweeted about weaning a baby and for three years he's been through hell having to defend himself uh, in a court effectively a court in South Africa now he has come through the back end of that and this book is all about the science about that trial and about how effectively we've all been looking at nutrition the wrong way now, I'm not here to convince you of anything, but there are two cases I think you should know about to try and at least tweak your mind into perhaps investigating low-carb, high-fat diets in more detail for endurance athletes. And the first case is Paul and Newby Fraser. In 1983, um, Paul and Newby Fraser phoned up Tim Noakes um, because she'd seen an article um, based on scientific evidence that the low-carb, high-fat diet might be good for endurance athletes. And she said to um, Tim Noakes, is this true? And he said, well, the evidence, he'd seen the, the report and he'd looked at the statistics, um, the evidence seems to support it. Um, go for it. I mean, why not? He didn't know that uh, she'd done that. But in all of the eight Kona titles that Paul and Newby Fraser won, she was following a low-carb, high-fat diet. Now, since then, Dave Scott, the amazing Iron Man as well, um, has come out and said, yes, he follows low carb, high fat diet. Effectively, he needs the low carbs, high fats to perform at the level he has performed on. And he supports that. Now, you can search all of this out. Um, it's all true. Uh, and if those two athletes who are performing at Iron Man level so well, are actually suggesting that loading in carbohydrates just is not good for you, then I think there's something in it and it should be looked at. So to recap, if you load up on carbohydrates, you produce extra insulin to try and turn that carbohydrate into fat. As you load more carbohydrates, you need more insulin again. That insulin becomes less and less effective. As it becomes less effective, you store that fat around your gut, like I have. Um, and that is the worst kind of fat you can actually store. That also leads to type 2 diabetes. And type 2 diabetes is associated with numerous amounts or numerous numbers of diseases of the body that you actually can avoid. And how can you avoid it? By following low carb, high fat. And that science I trust from Professor Tim Noakes. Why do I trust it? Because I can see that he actually doesn't care what happens to him except he cares about his reputation. He cares that his reputation is intact and if people are all he had to do effectively um, to make that case go away, that horrible case that he's gone through, was to give up being a doctor because he's a medical doctor and the Healthcare Professionals Council of South Africa could only attack him if he was a doctor. Now, he hasn't actually um, done any medical work in over 15 years, but he still was not going to give up that because his professional reputation is so important to him and he wants to stop this epidemic of obesity and type 2 diabetes that is blighting not only South Africa, but you can see it in America and you're starting to see it in the UK. A 20% increase, sorry, a 100% a, a increase 
in diabetes over the past 20 years to 3.7 million people in the UK and Diabetes UK reckon there are another 1 million people undiagnosed of type 2 diabetes. And I think just please read the book, think of Graham Abri, who benefits? Who benefits from the food you're eating? It certainly might not be you. And Professor Tim Noakes, whose sole wish is to disseminate true science, good science. And I can hear what you're thinking. Well, hang on a second. Who benefits? And he's written a book. Nope. Uh, Professor Tim Noakes doesn't actually make any money from his books whatsoever. He puts all the money into a thing called the, the Noakes Foundation, which supports uh, science and research. So you might think, well, Professor Tim Noakes is going to benefit from this. No, he isn't. But sports science, nutritional science is going to benefit. So from gut problems to diabetes to cardiovascular disease to even suggested that Alzheimer's, which is considered to be type 3 diabetes, could be uh, aided or cured by a low-carb, high-fat diet. And I think that's worth investigating for you if you're a long-distance runner or just a person who doesn't do any exercise at all. Just think back. If you see pictures of the 1960s, there's not many obese people around. See people today, most children are obese because they're weaned straight onto a high-carbohydrate diet. And those carbohydrates are just being stored as fat around the body. That's storing up huge problems for the future. And I, Tim Noakes, and I think Graham Obrey as well, would like that to be a thing of the past. OK, that's it for this week. It's just a thought-provoking thing. Um, I've listed uh, where you can buy these books um, underneath here. Ha comment if you like. Comment on your actual experiences of low carb, high fat, or vice versa. Not everyone is isn't insulin resistant, so more pe some people can eat more carbs than other people. Not everyone needs to do the same thing. Tim Noakes would be the first to suggest that. But it might be something that you need to consider if you put on body fat, even though you're exercising huge amounts. Okay, hopefully that's helped you. See you soon.